morning guys. Um, today I'm going to be demonstrating a live bait tray specifically targeting Garrick. Um, there's been a lot of Garrick um, on our coastline this time of year. Um, they run up the coast uh, from about June until October um, on their spawning run from the colder waters in the Eastern Cape and in Cape Town. And yeah, this is the trace that I use uh, to catch Garrick. I'm going to explain to you how to do it. Uh, the reason why I use this trace as opposed to using a treble hook is it does make it a lot easier for you to release the Garrick after you've hooked them. Um, a lot of a lot of time the Garrick does grab the, the trace and he swallows the hook a bit deep and you do hook him quite deep. Um, this I find you don't hook him as badly. Okay, so basically I've got uh, big guns, 1-0. Okay, this is probably the biggest, biggest size I would use. And basically what you do is you take the two hooks and you just bind them with cotton. You can use normal sewing cotton, you can use latex cotton, you can use ghost cocoon. Um, I've seen guys epoxy them, even put heat shrink over the, over the shanks to hold the two hooks together. It's quite a, quite a simple way to do it. Um, I actually don't mind these two hooks coming undone once you've hooked the fish. Um, the reason why you would use this is because normally one hook only gets hooked in it and the other one falls out out the way when you do hook the fish. There's a couple of tricks with, uh, with tying back to back. Obviously you don't have a standard, standard eye anymore because you've got two eyes back to back. So you can't actually tie a normal knot. Otherwise what it does is it wants to twist the hooks out and away from each other. So you can tie a perfect loop, a Rapala knot, um, any knot that's got a loop in it. Basically I just tie a double, a double granny knot and uh, I go through the eye of the hook and I follow it back through the back through the two loops in the opposite direction pull the loop to the size you actually want it and then you just half hitch it off I think this is called a long line tuna knot and you see that creates a nice nice loop and gives the hook a lot of free movement and you can just nip the tag end off there. Okay and then what I do is I normally go about a meter and a half so from my shoulder to the end of my hand. I'm just gonna bite this off and then I'll use a power saw size five, six, four, not too serious. Garrick are not too fussy I must say they when they decide they're gonna eat your live bait they'll eat your live bait. Um, again I'm just using standard Kingfisher 070, 060, 065 is all good. Um, they're not too fussy, I don't necessarily think you need to use fluorocarbon for them. As I said, when they decide to eat your live bait, they eat your live bait. I'm just doing a, a two turn figure of eight. This is not fluorocarbon, obviously, if you're using fluorocarbon, you want to do three turns. There's my figure of eight. Wet it, put it tight, get the tagging off. Other tag in. Okay, so what will happen is you'll actually grab the live bait and you'll often just pivot it around inside his mouth and try to swallow it head first because obviously they've got spines and fins and stuff like that. So you want to place the hook nest closer to the head. Okay, sometimes you can put it through the nostrils like that sideways and that, that just pulls the live bait nicely. Otherwise, you can go through the back closer to the head just like so and out the flesh and it's just pretty central there what that does is it also trips the live bait and the live bait actually swims like this and it gives quite a quite a strong movement in the water and gives it quite a, a good vibration and what that does I think it attracts the fish I mean if you look at a Garrick he's got quite a quite a pronounced lateral line and he uses that for sensing his his prey so um, as I said you just put the hook through there you can actually put a toothpick underneath here to stop the hook from pulling out but I find I don't, don't really have a problem with, with this setup. And when I'm fishing it, I'll fish one live bait like this, just like this on the surface. And the second one I'll put a 3 quarter ounce to a 1 ounce running sinker on my main line and it just, just slides to the, to the power saw. And what that does is it just pulls one live bait down a little bit and the second live bait on the surface. Two reasons for doing that, obviously you're covering two different depths. And the second reason is you're just stopping the two live baits from swimming into each other. So you're pulling them away from each other. Yeah guys, um, 
Garrick um, is an amazing fish, so I'm very pro for releasing them. So if we can just do our part and release them. Remember these fish that are traveling up our coastline at this time of the year are spawning fish. Um, nothing wrong with keeping one or two for the pot, but um, yeah, just be responsible and do your bit. Mm -hmm.